Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning po sa mga participants natin here on Zoom and also on YouTube. We are now live. And uh, welcome po to uh, the uh, course number two of uh, the uh, Philsci Hub and Fuse STEM Teaching Fellowship Program or webinar series. And uh, today's uh, course is uh, titled Practical and Innovative STEM Teaching. And uh, today uh, we are joined by two of the four formidable members of uh, the Philsci Hub leadership, leadership team, uh, Professor Dindy Voiles and uh, Professor uh, Michelle Lansigan uh, from, from the US. They are dialing from the US. And uh, ayun po, today we are uh, on the course number two of uh, the STEM Teaching Fellowship Program. So just a few reminders. Um, we kindly request everyone to uh, uh, mute and uh, turn off their videos for now um, and turn them on later when, when they want to pose a question or a comment uh, during our live discussion. And uh, please, uh, no recording of the session because uh, the full video of the event will be uploaded uh, on YouTube later, right after the uh, webinar. And the certificates of participation uh, will be issued uh, through a Google form. Uh, the link will be issued, uh, will be posted on the Zoom chat box and uh, also in the live comments in, uh, in YouTube. And uh, uh, yung pong uh, link ay makikita din po sa video description in YouTube uh, after the event. So you can uh, always go back uh, kung may mga na-miss po kayo na certain parts. And of course, uh, we would like to uh, request everybody uh, who are requesting for the certificates of uh, participation to subscribe and uh, become a subscriber, actually. It's a requirement uh, to the Philsci Hubs uh, official YouTube and um, Facebook group. Next slide. So, ayan. Uh, magandang umaga po to those who just uh, joined in. Uh, this is course number two of uh, the uh, Philsci Hub and Fuse um, STEM Teaching Fellowship Program. Uh, this is Practical and Innovative STEM Teaching. So magandang umaga po sa mga uh, participants natin. They are still coming in uh, sa YouTube. Uh, ayun po. So mga, sa mga uh, bago pong uh, oh, nakasalma sa mga webinars namin, we would like to again reintroduce our group uh, we are the Filipino Science Hub. And uh, uh, next slide. And uh, currently, um, dalawa po yung uh, main programs ng uh, Filipino Science Hub. And uh, this is driven by our vision to build a technology and innovation-driven Philippines. So right now, ang uh, dalawang main uh, campaigns po namin is Philsci Hub Ed and uh, Philsci Hub's Research University. So, um, yung topic po natin today is under Philsci Hub Ed, where we teach the STEM fundamentals uh, to empower our educators, uh, especially in this time of pandemic, to uh, deliver quality and uh, uh, highly understandable uh, STEM teaching materials. Ayan. So, uh, sa ano naman po, uh, can you go back? Yeah, Jeff. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Philsci Hub Ed. And the another, another component is the uh, Philsci Hub Research University. So uh, dito naman po, we, um, we try to apply what is uh, like given to us uh, dun sa STEM, uh, Philsci Hub Ed, dun sa mga materials na binigay po namin uh, to put into practice whatever um, we put out there uh, mga learning materials namin and also uh, like special topics. So dito naman po, uh, we try to uh, gather um, STEM practitioners and scientists and bring them closer to the uh, educational practitioners or the educational sectors composed of teachers and students. And um, all of this uh, works around um, bringing a new generation of uh, Pinoy STEM enthusiasts. Yep, next slide. So the Filipino Science Hub has been uh, around uh, since 2012, actually. We are, we are founded in uh, 2012. And it was only last year that uh, we went uh, on full force 
uh, at the start of the pandemic, we have been uh, very active um, delivering, uh, delivering webinars uh, to augment um, uh, the apparent lack of uh, teaching materials for distance, uh, distance learning. So since um, May last year, we have been delivering uh, web events uh, consisting of uh, teaching webinars, career guidance talks, web lectures, uh, research webinars, and other uh, STEM special topics para po uh, matulungan ng mga teachers natin ng, and students uh, to carry on with their um, um, their education ngayong uh, these extraordinary times. So since then, we have uh, uh, shared 87.5 hours of expertise and counting. And uh, we had already more than 16,000 live participants. And uh, we averaged around five participants per, per session or webinar. And this translates to over 40,000 training hours. Next slide. So, ayun po, PhilSab is always present in all of our platforms, uh, mainly our uh, uh, website, where we have uh, 20,000 visits a month in, on, on the average. And we're ever present on Facebook, where we have uh, 32,000 followers. And uh, YouTube, uh, where we have uh, 11. 11,000 uh, subscribers, and we're even present on TikTok. So, uh, dun po sa um, website namin, it contains all of our webinars, workshops, tutorials, modules, virtual labs, and uh, special features. Ayun po. Next slide. So, here to uh, introduce the Philsci Hub Ed program is our founder and CEO, Dr. Jeffrey Bunkin who is uh, dialing in from uh, Texas right now. Good morning, Doc Jeff. Okay, uh, thank, you. thank you, JP. Um, Take it away. Magandang umag <laughs> yeah, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Um, and you guys can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Loud and clear. Yon, maganda magandang umaga po sa inyo. Magandang um sobrang magandang umaga kay JP kasi madaling araw na naman po sa kanya doon sa yeah. program. So, gabi na po dito. Um, sa Houston, Texas. So, uh, muli, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa muli na naman ninyo pagtutok at pagsama sa amin. Um, I mean, I would also like to personally welcome you all back to uh, our STEM teaching webinar series. So, um, for this morning po, I will be talking about Philsay Hub Education, like our, our program, our education-related program, and how we're actually using um, this initiative um, uh, primarily to... Uh, empower educators. And then after that po, ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo, ano, para saan ba tong webinar series na to for teachers? Um, what's in it for our teachers actually ultimately? So, um, we're doing all these uh, teacher training initiatives po. Um, mainly because we believe that we will only be able to influence as many students as possible if we would empower our teachers um, who we consider to be our academic frontliners. Ano po. So uh, kapag ang ating mga guro ay mas uh, umangat ang kakayahan, mas marami tayong mga estudyante ang maapektuhan for the better. So dito po, kung titingnan ninyo sa uh, aming illustration dito, at the moment we have about 32,000 followers on Facebook and those are actually majority teachers. So imagine this. Um, these are mostly early to mid-career teachers. So if those 32,000 teachers are to be empowered, you know, you know through high quality uh, training programs, um, and, each, and if each teacher uh, teaches for an average 30 years, and um, for each year they get to influence 30 students, you're looking at 29 million students impacted over a span of 30 years. And so with this, even if siguro po, 1 or 2% lang yan ang maging scientists or maging STEM practitioners, that will surely help um, make the Philippines you know, a more progressive and innovation-driven country. So yan po talaga. That's, this is actually one of the main path, pathways by which we think we can actually reach um, our objectives at Filipino Science Hub. Okay, so uh, and then mabalik po tayo. Specifically, let's talk about the uh, uh, few spells I have STEM teaching uh, webinar series. So ito pong pangalawang installment na ito na, ng webinar ng specific first STEM uh, teachers ay collaboration po sa pagitan ng 
Filipino Science Hub and the Foundation for the Upgrading of the Standard of Education in the Philippines. So it's actually FUSE. So that's uh, a for education foundation but, uh, under the Lusitan group of companies. And so what we're actually doing for this um, STEM teaching uh, training series or webinar series is that we are um, giving our educators, you know, um, a refresher course on pedagogical um, approaches to teaching, so yung basics po natin, the teaching fundamentals. And then at the same time, what the Filipino Science Hub community or leadership is bringing forward is uh, a set of courses focused on innovative STEM teaching. So ito naman po, input ng scientists. So yun pong balancing approach na yan in such a way na yung fundamentals of teacher training, uh, of, of teaching, and at the same time, um, um, teaching tips and guides from scientists, we believe that that would be like a winning uh, formula for, for our teachers in the Philippines to most effectively teach them. And one very important thing po that we haven't mentioned at the moment since finalize pa lang din namin yung memorandum of agreement for this collaboration, we will be joined in by uh, educational leaders from one of the premier universities in the Philippines when it comes to education. So later on po, you'll actually see them participating. Okay. So, so I'm hoping that you would really participate in this. Um, and all of these, all of the training courses under this webinar series is actually being offered for free. That's what's actually most important. Okay, so ano bang nakapalaw po dito? So sabi ko nga namin, balance yung approach. Fundamentals of pedagogy and then practical and innovative STEM teaching from um, Filipino scientists and seasoned educators from higher education. So um, under po dun sa ating um, category of innovative STEM teaching, so um, last month we had started with a webinar um, focusing on the importance of uh, effective STEM teaching. So yun pong webinar na yan that's recorded. You can actually take that again and earn credit from that. So this time around uh, with our esteemed speakers, we, are be we, are, we will be focusing on practical and innovative STEM teaching. And then our third installment under this category would be the design of laboratory experiments with um, 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 spe with special attention on to virtual labs kasi kailangan kailangan po natin yan ngayon. And then um, the fourth and last installment para po dun sa ating in innovative and practical STEM teaching um, cluster of courses is actually focusing on research training both at the primary and high school levels. So when it comes naman po to the pedagogical training courses, we have four. Um, so the first of which is on the underpinnings of STEM teaching. So teaching yung na pinaka-basic po na tinuturo sa atin sa education uh, courses ninyo. Um, how to create modules, we'll also discuss that. How to deliver virtual lectures. And then lastly, uh, we, uh, of course, dapat po meron tayong um, assessment strategies. And at the moment po, under the Filipino Science Hub and Fuse collaboration, we are also working on um, the accreditation of these training courses po. So, um, you, sa atin po mga guru who would actually... Um, participate in this webinar series, there's also a possibility that at the end of this, um, you might actually also be given CPD units po. Um, you know, which is very important we understand, you know, for, for all of our professional teachers out there. So uh, we highly encourage you po, this is for free. Um, this is actually open to everyone who is willing uh, to, to learn more or to, to actually re or refresh themselves on, on some of these topics. Ayan po. So uh, that's 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 the details. Um and gaya nga po na sinabi namin kanina, pinakita ni JP, um um we we format like most of these uh, web events in such a way that you can revisit them. So yung nauna po namin training course last month, it's recorded po. It's on our YouTube channel and you can also access that on our website. So ito naman po, um Ito po yung una naming webinar. It, we had eight speakers, you know, um, who worked together to actually bring forward or emphasize the importance of effective STEM teaching po. So ito yung, kung so dun po sa mga hindi nakakuha nito, uh, pwede pa po ninyo itong itake. And then, just go to our website um, just so you can actually get the instructions or details on how you can avail of yung certificate po of participation. Okay, so sabi nga namin, ang approach natin dito sa Philsaya, hindi lang po kami turo ng turo. Sabi nga namin, what we actually feed the mind, um, those things that get into your heads, we have to be able to actualize. So kailangan na-apply po nito. And so um, along with the webinar series po, we have um, an ongoing um, STEM teaching fellowship program. So essentially po, we are calling for applicants for internship. Um, so um, 
after this um, internship program, po, the the uh, the main objective is um, for our participants to be able to apply both their pedagogical and practical STEM teaching skills. And that is by uh, creating high quality instructional materials. And dito po sa uh, um, internship program na to, uh, you'll not only learn about you know, yung mga course uh, contents na uh, dinitalya ko kanina, but then you'll also get the chance to be coached by um, um, experienced Filipino scientists and educators po. So meron coaching session dito. So kaya natin siya tinawag na internship. And then, then at the end of the day, uh, we will ask you to work on projects that will actually give you the opportunity to work collaboratively with your fellow teachers po. And then lastly, yung mga teaching materials that you will be developing will actually be also shared um, and you know spread around um, through a national platform. And so um, for specific details po, ito yung sinabi namin, essentially dito po sa internship, you will take the exact same um, eight training courses that I talked about, you know, under the webinar series. But then after that, if you get accept accepted to the uh, internship program, uh, you will go through the second stage, which is uh, comprised of a coaching session and then yung practicum po. You will, you will, you and um, as part of a group will work on a teaching uh, project uh, on a project you'll make teaching modules or instructional materials and then after that uh, you will actually have to defend that um, in front of a panel composed of Filipino scientists and leaders in Filipino uh, in, in education and then after that once you pass you'll get um, additional CPD units out of this Yun po. and then at the end of it po, the materials that you will be generating will be deposited into an open education resource that we um, in collaboration with fuse are actually putting together po, 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 para, para yung mga material na magaganda na nabubuo natin ay may share natin sa uh, buong Pilipina. So yun po. So you're not only uh, getting your internship, um, uh, you're not only um, potentially gonna get CPD units, but at the end of the day, may ambag din po kayo sa ating bansa. Ayun po. So um, how can you actually join? So we highly encourage you to send in your application. So wag po kayo may parang audition to, no? Ang, ang, ang naka-term dito is audition. But then we just ask for you to um, send us a two-minute video um, answering three specific questions. So the first of which we ask you to introduce yourself. Second, tell us about your long-term career goals as educators. And then lastly, um, tell us about what you ex your expectations, you know, from this teaching fellowship. Um, Isend you lang po yan nandun po sa aming website ang paraan kung paano kayo mag apply for this um, teaching um, fellowship um, and then ano po mag-send lang kayo ng application and then yung uh, we're ex we keep extending our deadline um, our deadline would actually be on July 15, 2021 so you still have uh, like about three weeks to uh, put together an application and then um, at the end of this po um Feel free to send us questions if you, if you you know if you want to learn more about all these programs and opportunities so yun po Teach webinar series and internship. Okay, now um, going into um, our webinar pro uh, proper. So as JP mentioned, this is the second installment of our uh, STEM um, teaching uh, or STEM um, STEM teaching webinar series. And uh, for it, for our second installment, um, we are actually going to be focusing on practical and innovative STEM teaching. And uh, we are very fortunate to be graced by two. Um, highly um, experienced and uh, decorated educators po, um, um, in chem uh, more particularly in higher uh, chemistry education. So um, our uh, speakers for, for today um, are both based in the U.S. and it's actually my pleasure to introduce the both of them to you. So we're going to start with Professor Dindi Voiles. So Professor Dindi the Voiles, um, uh, just like everyone um, in the Phil Hub leadership team, is a graduate of chemistry from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Um, she took up and she finished her PhD in chemistry from the University of Houston. And at the moment, she is actually working as a quality ma manager at the top paint and co uh, coating company uh, uh, in the world. So one of the global, one of the biggest global companies when it comes to paints and coatings. Um, before that, uh, she was a quality consultant for a biopolymer manufacturing company. And um, not only that, she has actually uh, covered a number of different areas in um, industrial um, 
um, chemistry. So she has experience in environmental chemistry, biotechnology, foods, and chemicals. So kahit po siya ay industrially trained and experienced, um, she, she also uh, has the passion when, uh, for teaching. So um, she is currently an adjunct um, online instructor at the Louisiana State University at, of uh, Alexandria. And she used to be like a full-time um, assistant professor. at the same university. And um, bago pa man po siya ng ibang bansa, meron na po talaga siyang pagmamahal sa pagtuturo because she also taught uh, chemistry at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And so yeah, that's our first uh, speaker, Professor Dindi Boyles. And then our second speaker um, is Professor Michelle Lansigan. So um, Professor Mich Michelle Lansigan, or we, we call them Ate Shelly, Professor Shelly, is actually a senior professor professorial lecturer at the American University in Washington, D.C. So she uh, also, uh, like, like us, she's also a graduate of chemistry um, from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And she took up her PhD um, at the Georgetown University, also in Washington, D.C. So I'm actually quite proud to say that Ate Shelley is an award-winning win educator. So just this year, she was actually given a university teaching award at, their, at American University. So ayun po, ang ating mga educators po uh, na mga Pinoy, uh, there they keep raising our flags for even abroad. So napakagaling po talaga ng ating mga educators just like Dindi and Ate Shelly. Um, 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 Professor Shelly has published seven international uh, science articles and um, she has also developed numerous um, curriculum contents and teaching um, tools. And then um, I, 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 I always say that, you know, um, teaching is her vocation po because uh, Professor Shelly um, has already, has, 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 um, rendered or uh, has volunteered um, through uh, numerous outreach activities and non-paid extension program. So again, mga kasamahan po natin sa Filipino Science Hub, it is actually my great pleasure and honor to present to you uh, our speakers for today, Professor Dindi Boyles and Professor Michelle Lansigan. Uh, JP, you're muted. Sorry. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, to those who just joined in uh, on YouTube, uh, uh, here is, uh, we, we have a webinar today about pra practical and innovative uh, STEM teaching, course number two of the uh, STEM teaching fellowship program. And I think we're, we're going to start with um, the practical and innovative uh, STEM teaching to be delivered by uh, Professor Dindi Voiles. So without further ado, Um, I give you, I give the floor, the virtual floor to uh, Professor Dindi Boyles. So maraming uh, makinig po tayo sa kanya. Good morning po sa ating lahat. And thank you, Dr. Jeffrey Bunkin, for that very kind introduction. So... I am Dindi Voiles, and I will be the first speaker for tonight. So there will be two parts for tonight's webinar. The first part is about practical STEM teaching. And then the other part is innovative approaches for STEM teaching, which will be delivered by Dr. Shelley Lansigan. So let me get started with the practical approaches for STEM education. So for today, for today, I would like to talk about two practical approaches, namely problem-based learning and project-based learning. So I've been teaching online and in person for quite some time now. There, I use traditional approaches still, and there are certain aspects on the online class that look similar to these two approaches. However, I have not fully applied these two approaches. So it was also, this was also a learning growth for me when I, while I was preparing for this webinar. So we are all learning together. But I'm, I'm sure if you've been teaching for quite some, some time, you've come across these two approaches. So there are other approaches that you will, you will find online, but I will be focusing on these two approaches. So problem-based learning and 
project-based learning. Let's start with the problem-based learning. So problem-based learning is a student-centered approach in which students learn about a subject by working in groups to solve an open-ended or real-world problem. And so this problem is what drives the motivation and the learning. So unlike traditional methods, students uh, receive or students get a real world problem first. So the teacher will state a real world problem. And then in the process of working for a solution, students learn the relevant scientific principle associated with the problem. So it's a traditional methods called baliktad yung approach. Concept muna and then my problem. So, paano po ba nagsimula yung problem-based learning? This was, this got started in the 60s in Canada. So the PBL process was pioneered by Dr. Barrows and Dr. Tamblyn at the medical school program at McMaster University. So back then though, medical students were, a lot of them were disenchanted because they would realize that a lot of materials presented to them during med school were irrelevant, were quite irrelevant to their practice, you know, medical practice. So these two doctors came up with a different strategy in order to help the students excel and be competitive in their future work by actually um, uh, reformatting their, their teaching approaches. So after that, a lot of different fields followed suit. And there are, alam ko sa Pilipinas, we're still not using this. This is really not, still not popular, but there are other countries that already use this type of approach, which I will share in a minute. Okay, so paano ba yung format ng problem-based learning? Well, the first, the first step really is to, for the teacher to place the class in small groups. So you can probably do, you know, two, two to three member students per group or rather than five. Um, so Wikipedia, you will see a typical small group that was eight to 10. For me, it's, it's a big size, especially if you are just starting. So you can probably start from, you know, between two to five group members. And then make sure na diversified yung, yung, yung magkakagrupo. And then the second step is the teacher presents real world problems. So make sure that na if you present the real world problems, like relevant din siya, connected siya sa concepto na gusto niyong malearn, yung matutunan ng mga estudyante. The third step is for students to evaluate their problems and create a research strategy. So at this point, walang computer allowed. So in other words, nagbe brainstorm ang mga estudyante. Paano ba nila uh, approach yung problem na presented to them? So this is the brainstorming step. And it could be, if you're doing it in a class period, it could just be five to 10 minutes. Or if, if it's designed for one week, then you can probably give it a day or two. But um, in this phase, walang computer allowed. So talaga magbe brainstorm yung group. And then the fourth step is students begin their search from reliable sources. So after they come up with a research strategy or siguro assign nila yung mga topics per member in the group, then they are allowed to use computer and search solutions or background information from reliable sources like peer reviewed journals or online textbooks or reliable news outlets. So wag lang pong basa sa Facebook or sa Twitter. Yeah, dapat po reliable yung sources ng mga students. And then finally, students share the answers or the processes and or the processes for the particular problem. So dito na po, uh, you will, the students will write either a lab report or present their in, the information to the class. 
So why should we use problem-based learning? What are the benefits? The first one is students develop skills associated with working in teams. So they will spend a lot of time brainstorming, talking to other students. So this will develop their teamwork skills. Also, they will be able to develop their project management and leadership skills. And we know that these are very important especially when students step out of the academia. The third one is uh, oral and written communication. So in addition to talking with each other among your teammates, the students get to present their, their answers orally and, and, and through a written report. So this will really enhance these skills as well. And then they will also develop self-awareness and evaluation of group processes. So group process means kasama po dyan yung peer evaluation. Matututo po sila mag-evaluate ng kagrupo nila. So even though they work with a team, they will also learn how to work independently. Kasi remember, they will have a brainstorming phase where they could think of strategies to go to how to divide their work. Um, so they could also have their own studies or their own research na pwede na lang i-contribute sa grupo. So, so working independently is also a skill that they will gain through project problem-based learning. And then of course, criti critical thinking and analysis. Kasi kasama sa problem-based learning is um, Pano mas solutionan and ano yung scientific basis or mathematical basis ng, ng solution. So, these skills will be enhanced as well. Explaining concepts. So, sabi nga ni Einstein, if you can't explain it, you don't, you simply don't understand it. So, um, dahil they really dig deep to a certain problem mas natutu na intindihan po nila yung concept ay yung science behind that problem and therefore they will be able to explain because they themselves learned the science the science um, deeper instead of just memorizing concepts the basa traditional methods to pass the test kadalasan po pag nahihirap pa naman ang estudyante they just memorize it but with problem based learning students really can't do that because they, they have to come up with answers through, uh, through science and, and math. And then self-directed learning, the enhanced po ito, kasi yun nga, um, in sa, sa format ng PBL, they have to search for answers by themselves. So, uh, pwede silang siguro maghihin ng guide, guide sa mga teachers, but then at the end of the day, they still have to learn on their own. And we know that this is an important skill uh, as an adult, you know, because life should be a lifelong, you know, we should be learning as, as long as we're uh, living. Hindi natatapos sa loob ng classroom. So with this, with this approach, may enhance po yung ganitong skills ng ating mga estudyante. And then, of course, they'll be able to apply the course content to real-world examples. So, mas maririteen ng mga estudyante yung, uh, yung information, yung, yung science and math kasi di ba ganun naman tayo mas, mas naaalala natin kapag relatable to real-world to real world examples yung science concepts. They will also develop researching and information literacy. So, um, dito po by enhance, malalaman nila kung ano yung mga reliable resources, hindi lang po Facebook or mga social media. So, because they will, they will have to search for answers through, through uh, reliable resources. And then, of course, you have problem-solving skills across disciplines kasi hindi ba problem-based learning siya. So this is um, the, the critical skill that will, will be enhanced in this approach. So considerations for using PBL, like I mentioned earlier, 
um, you have to present the problem first. So it's tempting to present the concept first because this is our traditional way of teaching. But in PBL, you present the problem first and then students discover the, the knowledge, the scientific knowledge that, that they need to have through by answering these problems. And then um, PBL assignments can be short or they can be more involved and take a whole semester. So for so Philippines, we don't use this, we don't use it um, popular in approach. So if you're, if you decide to explore this, then of um, be, uh, start, start it with short, you know, PBL assignments first. Wag nyong palitan yung buong curriculum nyo for the entire semester. So take baby steps lang po. So here's just a list of the characteristics of PBL. So learning is student-centered, just like what I mentioned. Learning occurs in small groups. The teacher acts as a facilitator, not a dictator. So facilitate lang po natin yung learning ng mga bata. And then authentic problems are presented before any presentation or study has occurred. The problem itself drives the learning. And then new information is acquired by a self-directed learning. So how do we how to begin PBL? Well, first, Establish the learning outcomes. And then by your objectives, um, just like your traditional methods, you always have to, to know and the way you're adding end goal. So for, for, for this particular problem-based learning activity. And then find a relevant real-world problem. So uh timing you po sa kung ano nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran sa mundo uh, or in the Philippines. And also, you have to find a relevant problem according to their age group. You know? So, elementary or high school ba? Ano yung, ano yung relevant, especially sa, sa pinag-aaralan nila? Discuss group goals. So, what are the non-negotiable attitudes? Ano yung mga dapat, uh, mga acceptable or not acceptable behavior when it comes to working in teams? So, dapat ma-establish din po yan. Sa class, sa classroom ninyo. And then introduce students to group processes, just like your peer, peer feedback, uh, brainstorming activities. Ayan, kailangan i-introduce po natin sa mga sadyante unti-unti. Explore different roles for students. So pwede nyo po silang encourage na uh, mag-take ng different roles. Like say, for example, one of them can, be, can take the role of a businessman or a government official or a CEO of a company. That way, they, they would know the perspectives of these, of these people on certain problems. So magkakaroon po ng diversity sa perspective nila within their group. And then finally, establish assessment strategies. So... Thankfully, po marami pong templates online and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And so I will share a website for, for you for different for a resource for this type of approach. So let's go to the teacher's role in PBL. And as I mentioned earlier, determine a problem that is aligned with the course and with your students, okay? And then place student in groups that are well mixed and has a diversity and skill levels to strengthen the group. So wag lang pong um, yung mga magagaling magkakasama and yung medyo nagbahay magkakasama din. Dapat mo diversify so that so that way well balanced po yung group po. And then support the students with understanding the content on a deeper level. So especially if you're just starting this approach, wag niyo po silang pabayaan na lang bigla. So unti-unti lang po, ano, uh, baby steps nga, ika nga. So always be there whenever they have questions or if they need support in understanding certain concepts. So kailangan po supportahan natin ang mga sadyante. So what about the students? When they are doing their brainstorming, ito po yung kailangan nilang uh, or these are some that some of the things that they can do while working within the group. So analyze the problem and the issues it presents. Construct a list of what is known about the problem. 
construct the problem in their own words, generate a list of possible solutions. So, hindi lang po isang solution ng pwede. You know, they could come up with many solutions. So, dito na rin po pumapasok talaga yung brainstorming within the group. And then they need to establish a timeline with concrete actions, generate a list of what else your team needs, organize and write the team's report, and then present the conclusions as well as the foundation for them that the team worked on. So, alam ko po, it sounds parang matrabaho sa teacher, pero actually mas, uh, mas matrabaho sa mga estudyante, but they will become more engaged. Um, mas and it will be beneficial for, for them Kasi nga because of the benefits that we discussed earlier. So I'm sure so it's a bit awkward itong process. Na to, but the more, the more they get used to it, um, the, they will get used to it. You know, hindi na sila magreklamo. And you can also emphasize that these are the things that you will do outside school. So pag Pag nagtrabaho na sila sa mga iba't ibang kumpanya, especially if it's non academic job, laging may problema. So, so they, will, they will need to have a systematic approach on dealing with problems. And by doing this approach, they will really be enhanced. Their problem skills will be enhanced. So, ito po yung mga examples of PBL and curricula. So, PBL 4C. Problem-based learning, the four core areas, which is in Malaysia, Republic Polytechnic in Singapore, and then medical schools, such as University of Missouri School of Medicine, UC Berkeley, and UCSF Joint Medical Program, etc. So, makikita niyo po online no, na positive po yung nagiging outcomes ng, mga, ng PBL sa, sa curricula, sa STEM curricula in particular. So sa Pilipinas po, if we want to get started, this is my personal take. I think we can keep it simple by asking the following questions to our students pag may brainstorm sila. So first, they need to know why is the problem presented a problem? Bakit siya problema? And what caused the problem? Why should students care? And what are the possible solutions? So alam ko po, I presented a lot. And I got all these, these information from different resources. But I think these four, as a starter, will really help our students um, enhance their problem-solving skills. So some examples of PBL activities na pwede natin um, i-gamitin sa Pilipinas. So ngayon po, still very hot on COVID-19 topic, especially in vaccination. So the pro present the problem, despite having one of the worst COVID-19 infection rates in Southeast Asia, majority of Filipinos are hesitant to get vaccinated. So again, first question, why is this a problem? What causes? Second is what causes this problem? Third is why should students care? And then fourth, what are the solutions to this problem? Okay. And then another example would be Philippines has more than enough source of groundwater and surface water. However, 58% of the groundwater is contaminated. So, yun, himay po yun ang mga sujante. Third example na pwede magamit sa PBL is. Each year, the population in the Philippines is increasing by 2.36%, which equates to 5,000 people each day. So again, we ask the question, why is it a problem? <laughs> what caused the problem? Why should students care? And what should be the solutions to this problem? Another one, research and development has always been an afterthought in the Philippines. Businesses do not have a budget for such activities because of lack of funds and government support. So, totoo po yan, manangyayari. <laughs> Ayan, ito, medyo makakarelate tayo lahat. Internet connectivity in the Philippines is the slowest in the Southeast Asia due to antiquated infrastructure. Ayan, so pwede nilang himay-himayin yan. And then last, my last example 
which I got from Dr. Jeff McCain, Philippines ranked 79 in the 2018 program for international student assessment. 79 countries participated. So, yan. Medyo, siguro hindi siya STEM related, pero pwede pa rin nilang gamitin pang explore to, to use the, uh, the PBIL approach. So, let me share to you this website real quick as a recommendation. So, it's from University of Delaware. And here, as you can see, Meron silang mga sample syllabi and exams, evaluation forms from pro for problem-based learning, yan, mga evaluation form, rubrics for uh, evaluating problems, that was evaluating individuals in group work or a PBL program. And then also they have a list of PBL learning problems. So again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yan, may marami na tayong resources if you want to start this approach. So let me go back to my presentation. All right. So libre po yung website na yon. And in fact, if you click on the, on most of the topics, it will point you, it will direct you to a Google Drive with forms and mata download ni Pusila for free. Okay, so that's it for problem-based learning. Now I will share, talk about project-based learning or PJBL very, very briefly because this is very similar to problem-based learning. So let me uh, share the, this diagram just to differentiate and list down the similarities between these two approaches. So first, yung commonalities muna po. So first is, Students are engaged in real world tasks. And then in both approaches, student centered, they are both student centered and they work in small group. And then simulate professional situation, um, process multiple information sources, teacher acts as a facilitator for learning and resource guide, and then formative and performance based peer evaluations. So, for example, formative assessment they basically you assess them on on the process of learning during the learning process so summative po yung isang type na assessment ano, where, um, where we tend to assess students at the end of the semester or at the end of mo module or periodically or things of that nature pero dito po pareha sila formative and performance based assessment so makikita natin sa, sa diagram na to yung differences naman sa outcomes. So problem-based, it's deeper understanding and theory building, whereas sa project-based, it's case-specific understanding and practical products. And then main activity naman for problem-based learning is inquiry of problematic situation, whereas project-based learning is producing applicable results. Organizing principle for problem-based learning is learning tutorial, and then organizing principle for project-based learning is project management. And then self-directed learning. So for problem-based learning, it's fully student-centered and loosely predefined setting. Whereas the project-based learning is student-centered within a predefined project time frame. And kasi nga, so project-based learning, you're also teaching them project management skills. And in real world, my, my deadline on projects. So you have, they have to have that time element. So what are the characteristics of project-based learning? And mapapansin niyo, they are very similar to problem-based learning. So the first one is organized around an open-ended driving question or challenge. And then it creates a need to know essential content and skills. And then project-based learning approach requires inquiry to learn and or create something new. It requires critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and various forms of communication. And these are often known as 21st century skills. Here, students, it allows some degree of student voice and choice, and then incorporates feedback and revision. And then finally, it results in publicly presented product or performance. 
So I saw this online. It's a simple lesson plan for project-based learning approach. So just like your problem-based learning, begin with the end in mind. Ano ba yung mga learning objectives? You know, ask why should these students do this do this project? Ano ba yung mga skills na na magigain nila dito? So include that in your lesson plan, and then craft the driving question. So ano ba yung ano ba yung challenge nila for this for this project? And then plan the assessment. What would be how would you evaluate their work? Um, ano ba yung mga criteria for good performance or uh, assessment even within peer evaluations. And then map the project. So dito na po lumalabas yung timeline and then yung milestones ng mga projects nila. And then finally, you have to manage the whole process. So mapapansin nyo po ang kaibahan ng project-based learning sa doing projects is merong proseso. Mahaba, medyo mahaba-habang proseso yung PJDL. Whereas yung Paggawa ng project, di ba, we, do, we normally do that after we learn something. So tradi traditionally, po, whenever we make projects, that's after we learn something. Whereas a PJDL, you actually get to create something in the process of learning. So, mahaba haba siya. So, here are some project-based learning ideas na nakisa ko po. So, for example, for elementary level, Pwede niyong itanong, this could be a driving question for your PGBL students, what happened to the dinosaurs? And then they can also take a math approach to nutrition. So i-analyze nila yung, yung, yung foods nila and dishes for presentation about select recipes. And then sa Philippines naman, your driving question could also be COVID-19 related. What is the importance of face shield during the COVID-19 pandemic? Or what is dolomite sand and how will it affect Manila Bay? So that's really the end of my web, my talk, my portion. I think my final thoughts would be if, if ever that um, Philippines or the education system in the Philippines decide to implement this type of approaches that if you're proposing for it, make sure to just have a, a structure in your proposal. Kailangan klaro yung objective and i-discuss ninyo sa mga heads ninyo, department heads ninyo, yung mga benefits. Um, and ako po bilang nag-work sa industry, talagang nakarelate po ako sa problem-based learning kasi nga, that's my job to solve problems in, in the company, to find the root cause, find immediate solutions. And by having this training, kung habang bata pa, is talagang nag magiging competitive sila in the future. So I really wish we had something like this in elementary and high school. But um, I hope meron po kayong natutunan. If you have questions, uh, we will have Q&A after the talk. But I will turn the virtual floor over to Dr. Lansigan. She will be talking about innovative practices or innovative STEM teaching. So thank you, Paul, and I will see you all in a bit. Ayan. So maraming maraming salamat, uh, uh, Ma'am Dindi, uh, for that very insightful talk. Um, so I think... Mom Shelly is ready to share her uh, screen. So, uh, can you see uh, my screen? Can you yes. see my screen? Okay. Yes, good morning, Mom Shelly. Good um, morning. Mom, remind ko lang po yung mga audience natin uh, here on Zoom and on on uh, YouTube. You can post your questions at any point during the the talks. So, uh, sa mga YouTube participants po natin, you can post them on the the chat box and we will ask them for you later in the discussion. So dito din po sa uh, you, uh, sa Zoom naman po we encourage uh, live uh, live questions uh, during the the discussion para po mas lively naman yung ano natin uh, Q&A portion. Ayan. So Ma'am Shelly, you can uh, take the screen. Okay. Salamat JP and salamat din Dindi for all the tips and ideas that you shared earlier. So nakita niyo po sa pinerset ni Professor Voyles, nakita natin yung iba't ibang ways to uh, teach STEM in a practical manner. So andiyan yung 
um, problem-based and project-based learning. Pero hindi lang kasi dapat uh, tayo practical. Kailangan din maging innovative tayo. So yung mga approaches po na share na sinishare namin, kung nagawa nyo na po, feel free to share with the student at the end of the webinar para makita natin yung actual application. And kung bago po ito lahat sa inyo at gusto nyo itry, kagaya po ng sinabi ni Professor Wells kanina, take baby steps. So hindi naman po kailangan na kumbaga, major overhaul po ng course natin. So we can take uh, bits and pieces of what we're sharing and then get feedback from your students. Importante po lagi yung feedback. Um, know uh, what works, what's not working, and then from there, move forward kung paano nyo po uh, i-enhance yung um, learning experience ng mga students natin. Okay? So, um, gaya po ng uh, nangyayari ngayon, we see that our world is actually evolving at an increasing rate. And particular dito yung ating educational landscape ever since the pandemic began, di ba? Nag-change siya rapidly. And one of the best ways na uh, yung educators, kagaya natin, can prepare our students for the future is to provide them with an innovative STEM education. So, paano nga ba natin uh, magkakreate ng innovative na STEM classes? So, kahit na yung mga technical skills, kagaya ng ability to code, um, ability to use um, machineries or instruments or yung paggamit ng software, mahalaga sila, pero yung isa pang napaka-crucial na learning outcome na dapat natin pinapadevelop is yung pagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin na growth mindset. So, ano nga ba yung growth mindset? So, yung growth mindset, this is the belief that um, through effort, pagpupursige, tsaka dedication, a person's abilities can improve. And even yung pinaka-difficult na challenges na gagawa natin ng paraan or ng solutions. So, ito yung pinaka-key para maging innovative yung ating STEM classes. And that is, we have to be able na to foster the growth mindset doon sa ating mga estudyante. So, let's dive deeper dito sa tinatawag na growth mindset. So I'm gonna uh, I'm showing here a, a quote by Dr. Carol Dweck, siya yung nag-coin ng term na growth mindset. So, sabi niya, in the growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. So, hindi siya set na kumbaga uh, your brains and talent are just the starting point. Uh, Simula lang yon. Pwede natin ihun yung mga talent natin, yung, yung actually pati intelligence, eh, para maging more developed tayo. And this kind of view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great um, accomplishment. And that is, in stark contrast, sa tinatawag natin fixed mindset. So sa fixed mindset, yung mga uh, taong may gantong klaseng mindset, they believe that their basic qualities like yung intelligence or talent are simply fixed traits. Yung kumbaga, wala na tayong magagawa. Yun na yun eh. So they spend their time um, documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. So they also believe that talent alone creates success without effort. So kumbaga, kapag sinabi natin na um, fixed mindset, parang tinitingnan nila yung intelligence as yung para pong eye color. So pag pinanganak tayo, we're born with a particular eye color, di ba? So, libaw sa example ko dito, brown yung color ng baby, uh, brown yung color ng eyes ng baby. Pag lumaki siya, brown pa din yung eyes niya. So, it is fixed. So, naniniwala sila na kung ano yung intelligence na uh, born ka with, yun na yun. Wala ka nang magagawa to change that. And nakikita natin yan minsan sa mga bata na halimbawa, nahirapan sila sa math. So, iniiwasan nila ngayon, pag nag-college sila, iniiwasan nila yung subjects na may numbers, na may math or kukuha sila ng course na very minimal yung math. So ayaw nila ng challenge, hiniwala sila na wala na silang magagawa kasi hindi sila magaling sa math. So let's try to remove that kind of attitude. So gawin natin growth mindset. So parang uh, ganito na uh, isipin natin na parang muscles yung intelligence na kapag nag, ano tayo, nag, uh, nagpunta sa si gym, nag-exercise, nag-lift weights, na bumibigat, uh, the muscle becomes stronger, it becomes bigger. Parang intelligence, di ba? Kung baga, parang talent, nahuhon siya dahil nagpupursigi tayo at dahil nagsa-challenge tayo, we try to um, strive to become better. So, halimbawa dito, uh, meron dalawang um, examples ito. So, sa fixed mindset, pag nag-fail nag yung, yung bata, ayun na yun, it's the limit of my abilities. Um, I don't like being challenged, uh, I stick to what I know, I'm frustrated, so I give up. So, yun na yun. Pero kapag growth mindset, 
um, they see failure as an opportunity to grow. So, yung challenges, parang gusto nila yun. It, it helps me, it helps them develop, it helps them grow. Gusto nila yung feedback kasi they learn from other people. And contrary to somebody with a fixed mindset na they stick to what they know, but may growth mindset, they like to try new things. So, as educators, ito po yung nurture natin. Let's nurture the growth mindset sa mga estudyante natin. So, how do we promote the growth mindset, and at the same time, create innovative innovative STEM classes, whether we are teaching in person, kagaya nitong nasa video, or um, in a virtual environment. So unang-una, one thing that I could say is, start, uh, yung, yung, kumbaga, let's focus on engagement. So for meaningful learning to occur, students must first feel engaged with the material. So madami examples na binigay si um, Professor Boyles kanina na something relevant to their everyday life. So one way to engage them is to help them understand how the subject matter relates to their lives. So gawin po natin examples yung mga nakikita natin sa araw-araw. Gawin natin um, uh, actual application yun ng mga concepts na inaaral nila. So babalik ulit ako sa COVID kasi yun yung masyadong relevant, di ba? So halimbawa po, you're teaching math. So kung math problem, pwede natin sabihin, um, Ilang vaccines per day ang dapat uh, ma-administer sa adult population, let's say sa probinsya ng Laguna, kung tagasan po ako, para ma-achieve natin ng herd immunity. So sa ganito kasi ng problem, sa tatakal natin yung math, tapos nagkakaroon din ng idea about public health, tapos naaaral din yung science kasi about yung, what's the science behind vaccination. So pwede rin kalimbawa, for example, bakit maraming hesitant ngayon, um, anong pagkakaiba ng bawat vaccines, uh, so, touch on something relevant that they can relate to. So, pwede rin po na gumitin natin ng pop culture. So, halimbawa po, kung nanonood kayo na ang probinsyano, di ba si Cardo, kahit anong gawin niya, hindi siya natatamaan ng bala. So, pwede natin i-incorporate yung physics doon. Ano ba yung trajectory ng bullet? Ano dapat yung distance niya doon sa taong bumawaril sa kanya para hindi siya matamaan? So, gawin po natin interesting and engaging para po may recall po sa mga uh, students natin. So, kapag po engaging kasi yung class, na-encourage yung mga bata na magtanong. And that is um, very important para ma-develop yung uh, kumbaga, natural excitement nila sa isang subject matter. At kung excited yung mga bata, nagsispread yan um, throughout the, the classroom. So, if we engage them, we facilitate an environment where we, uh, we allow the students to think and formulate questions. And that leads to the growth mindset. So, another example is to embrace guided play. So, yung uh, pag-include ng guided play sa classroom is another way to develop a growth mindset. So, sabi nga nila, kapag naglalaro po yung mga bata, hayaan natin, wag natin masyadong pakialaman. I-guide lang natin to make sure na they're safe, hindi sila nasasaktan, wala nag-aaway, parang just encourage them to engage in prudent play. So, importante po yung um, guided play kasi this encourages uh, a child's natural curiosity na mag-develop. So, nade-develop yung um, soft skills like creativity, persistence, resilience, kasi limbawa, lagi silang talo. Parang paulit-ulit na gusto nilang ma-achieve na manalo sila, di ba? And of course, problem solving. So if you incorporate that into your classes, let's say you give um, your students the freedom to explore um, STEM concepts um, in their own terms while playing, you will uh, give them a chance na parang ma-discover nila yung something that they are uh, passionate about. So one example dito, for ex uh, itong pinapakita ko sa video ngayon, may dalawang bata naglalaro, they're just simply putting weights dun sa um, scales, di ba? So, kumbaga nag enjoy sila, naglalaro sila, pero na-realize nila na hindi dapat mat ma mag-topple over. So, na-realize na 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 din nila yung kumbaga critical mass, uh, dapat take turns tayo para hindi matumba. So, they are playing, but at the same time, may concept silang na natututunan. So, another example na uh, personally nagamit ko is, uh, nagtuturo po ako ng chemistry, ano po? So, isang experiment namin sa lab is uh, isang airbag experiment. So, syempre, hindi naman pwede pong itesting yung airbag, di ba? So, yung ginawa namin, uh, meron silang Tupperware. So, yung Tupperware yung parang vehicle nila. Tapos, yung pasahero nila, ginawa namin raw na egg. So, yung cushion or yung kumbaga airbag is merong plastic bag sa loob ng Tupperware. Tapos, nakapatong dun yung egg. Tapos, sa loob ng plastic bag, merong vinegar and baking soda. So sa chemistry, when you uh, mix vinegar and baking soda, one of the products is carbon dioxide. So yun yung nag inflate ng 
ng airbag or ng plastic bag. So, ang nangyari, iba't ibang amount sila ng starting materials na kinumbay nila, tapos they have to learn stoichiometry. They have to learn stoichiometry. I'm sorry. They have to learn stoichiometry para malaman nila kung gaano karaming um, vinegar, gaano karaming baking soda, go combine nila para enough yung air na ma-produce nila to cushion the egg. And then afterwards, uh, ila iatataas nila yung kanilang vehicle tapos ito drop nila at different heights. So para naglalaro sila, iba't ibang heights, pataasan sila ng heights kanina yung egg na hindi nabasag. So they are playing but at the same time kuhang-kuha nila yung concept ng stoichiometry and chemical reaction. So, it's uh, it's like guided play, pero more on the higher ed level. And then, third um, um, way to set the group, promote the growth mindset and become innovative in your, in your classes is to introduce inspiring um, role models. So, according to several research, na, parang na, na, napansin nila na kapag yung bata na exposed siya sa innovation at a young age, may increase yung likelihood na pagtanda niya, magiging innovative din siya. And one way to start that is to introduce young ones to role models na kumbaga STEM professionals. So kumbaga magpa-career talk tayo sa ating mga bata. So pwede nating mag-discuss, for example, pwede start tayo with discussions like um, si Rosalind Franklin, yung sa uh, discovery ng DNA, kay Albert Einstein, si Catherine Johnson, kung nanood kayo ng movie na Hidden Figures. Tapos sa Philippines, yung story ni Dr. Fidel Mundo, uh, Dolores Ramirez, and so on. So parang kumbaga, inspire natin sila. You can be this, uh, kagaya ng mga magagaling na taong ito, if you uh, pursue. So pwede rin natin gamitin yung mga relatable and realistic STEM role models na galing sa ating community mismo. So, imbitahin natin si Mr. Fireman na mag-discuss about heat, uh, paano ba napapatay yung apoy, and so on. Or mag-imbita mag tayo ng doktor, uh, imbita kayo ng, um, let's say, medtech or biologist, uh, construction worker, uh, accountant, chemist. Uh, ngayon sa, sa panahon ngayon, pwede nang gawin yun via Zoom, di ba? So, pwede silang mag-talk sa mga uh, studyante ninyo just to show kung paano sila naging successful and that will increase your students' motivation. So incorporate what they could be in the future by looking at this um, exceptional role models. And then another way is to use uh, classroom technology effectively. So hindi lang basta uh, technology, kailangan effective use of technology. So anong, kung, anong ibig kong sabihin doon? So isipin natin, anong klaseng tech tools and apps ang pwede natin gamitin para matulungan yung mga students natin na mag-develop nitong growth mindset. So, ang sagot dyan is ano yung nag-work for you? Siyempre, gagamitin mo yung technology na kaya mong gamitin confidently, di ba? Hindi yung dahil available gagamitin natin. So, you always have to think about what's your goal and what are the learning outcomes that you plan to achieve by using this technology. So, ngayon na sa online learning tayo, gagamit ba ako ng cellphone ko, uh, magdo-document camera ba ako, Gagamit ba ako ng iPad or ng computer? So, use what you think is available and also yung confident kang gamitin. And then, there's a lot of apps available. So, I'm showing um, some here. You don't have to use everything, but every once in a while, it will not hurt if we try to explore and learn um, new uh, applications. So, I'm a big fan of Kahoot and Mentimeter. I use it in my classes all the time just to break the ice. Uh, just, just to see how engaged my students are and just to see also kung ano ba yung natututunan nila at that point. And again, I have to look back, ano bang objectives or learning ob outcomes ang gusto kong uh, ma-achieve. So maraming, um, let's say, mga um, uh, established na, na teachers yung talagang matagal na nagtuturo na ayaw nang matuto ng new technology. So ang masasabi ko doon, we should embrace technology kasi marami siyang benefits and it's, where it's also allowing us to prepare our students for the future. So maraming benefits actually yung paggamit ng technology sa classroom. And you just have to make sure that you choose the ones that work for you. And again, yung madideliver nyo confidently. So for example, um, one advantage is that um, technology can help connect students to the real world. So halimbawa ngayon, wala tayong field trips, di ba? So pero maraming mga virtual tours. So gamitin natin yan. Uh, I-tour natin, let's say, sa White House. May mga available na websites for that. Tour natin sa Pagsanhan Falls, mga ganon. So, use um, 
use technology, use, use yung virtual tours to connect students to the real world. And then another benefit is that it allows you to connect with your students. So mas madali tayong mag-connect. Dati nakikita lang tayo sa classroom. Ngayon, andyan ang chat, andyan ang um, email, andyan ang uh, video chat, and so on. But uh, even though we are easily connected mm. with our students, we also have to set boundaries. So dapat meron pa rin pa, po tayong work-life balance kapag magsasagot tayo ng mga um, tanong and emails from our students. And then third, it also encourages collaboration. So what I use in my class is that uh, lagi kong ginagamit ang Google, Google Documents. So halimbawa, meron silang paper. Pwede na, pwedeng gawing group paper kasi pwede silang all at the same time going yun sa kanya-kanyang bahay at, the, at their own time, at their own pace. But then they, when they reach the deadline, ayun yung full paper nila. Pwede rin full presentation. So uh, feedback from my students is that and mas na-encourage silang mag-collaborate kasi mas madali ngayon mag-work together. And then, fourth, it also adds a fun factor to learning. So, gagaya ng mga apps na pinakita ko, yung may mga games, mas nakaka-engage sa mga students. So, going back to the first point that I raised earlier, kapag nag-focus tayo to in sa engagement, mas nagiging interesado yung mga students natin sa ating courses. And it also incorp uh, incorporates different learning styles. So, dati may mga bata na nahihiyang magtanong, di ba? Pero most sa kanila ngayon, sa Zoom na pansin ko, mas nagtatanong sila sa chat. Or, bawa natapos na yung klase, magtatanong sila via email. So, in that way, kahit hindi sila face-to-face -face magtanong, nakakarating sa inyo yung concerns sila because of technology. And then, Technology, syempre, kasama yan sa future. Kapag involved siya sa ating curriculum, we also prepare our students for the workforce. So introducing instructional technology in the classroom at a young age can help prepare students for future digital demands. So ito yung magiging future kasi natin. And then, obviously, mas madaling ma-access ang information. And kapag nag-incorporate tayo ng technology, we also teach our students how to be responsible online. So proper social media presence, um, proper use of online sources, proper citation, and so on. So kapag na-incorporate natin tong lahat uh, because we use technology, para yung mga students natin, na-de-develop na, na din sila para maging prepared sila for the future. Kasi yung future natin, let's face it, it's all gonna be um, digital one way or another. Okay. So another point is to develop curious investigative thinking. So anong ibig sabihin doon? How do we help students develop this mode of thinking para maging innovative yung classes natin and help them develop this growth mindset? So I'm giving here an example. So let's say, let's say face-to-face -face class tayo. Nagpunta kayo sa Science Museum, tapos meron doon static ball. Si Tokovari, si Jenny, hinawakan niyo yung static ball. Tapos nagtumirik yung mga buhok niya. So why does my hair stand up when I touch the machine? So pagbalik niya ngayon sa classroom, mag investigate siya. So we should allow them to observe, pose questions, and you know, basically kagaya sa example na ito, para i-relate niya sa real-world phenomena yung objects and events na na-observe niya. And then another one is we should allow them to explore, design, um, experiments and solutions using engineering and technology and then map out their idea. So example dito si Deja, uh, gumagawa siya ng bridge tapos lagi nagka-crash yung truck na pinap yung car na pinapadaan niya. So paulit-ulit gagawa siya ng design para maging reinforced yung bridge niya. And that is um and that also uh, develops um, investigative thinking. And then isa pa example dito Pwede din gumamit ng models. Turuan natin yung mga students natin na mag-take advantage ng mga materials around them to put together a model that would explain, let's say, a natural phenomena. So, halimbawa, example dito, um, nag-explain siya kung paano ba nag-perform yung mountains. Tapos, i-allow natin sila mag-present sa class. So, when somebody presents in class, they develop hindi lang yung confidence, pero yung communication skills at saka critical thinking. Kasi, syempre, mag-expect ka ng tanong from your audience. And again, that facilitates investigative thinking. It is uh yung enhance yung curiosity as well. Another example dito, may bata na nag-kick ng ball, natamaan yung blue ball, yung blue ball nag uh, nag nag-move siya. So ibig sabihin na transfer yung energy. So if a student can discuss and explain um this ideas using evidence, the ibig sabihin naiintindihan niya talaga yung sinasabi niya. Kagaya din to ng sinabi ni Professor Voyles kanina. Then finally, 
kahit ito sa um, face-to-face or um, online class, yung pagde-design at saka pag-plan and analyze ng data, pwede nating pagawa sa kanila to. So halimbawa, how would you how many measurements uh, should you take? How did we specify investig- uh, investigation plan? Um, three different areas of the pond when they investigate sila sa pond or halimbawa um, sa mga bahay uh, merong mga observe sila ng ants saan ba pumupunta yung ants uh, what are ways to stop them or eliminate them diba? so bawag gagamit ng asin tama, totoo ba na kapag naglagay tayo ng salt uh, nawawala yung mga langgam so we can have them do those kinds of at home experiments to facilitate um, curiosity and investigative thinking so naniniwala kasi tayo na yung uh, best teachers, they they are the ones who show you where to look. So, kung bagay, bibigyan natin sila ng, ng problem, tapos bibigyan natin sila ng hints, igagayad natin, but don't they don't tell us what to see. Tayo yung bahalang uh, makakita. Kasi kapag tayo yung bahalang makakita or yung sudyating bahalang makakita dun sa ino-observe nila, that just facilitates what we call as creative thinking, which is one of my next uh, points as well. Then another way, is to also invite a teamwork and collaboration. So either face-to-face or online class, pwedeng-pwede po gawin ng teamwork and collaborative work. So gagaya po nang nasabi ko sa previous webinar namin, the best STEM classes feature collaboration and teamwork. Kasi kapag yung mga bata nag-work together, natututo sila na mag-develop ng dynamics with their teammate, natututo sila mag-brainstorm, natututo sila maging um, receptive sa ideas ng iba, uh, mag-give ng feedback. It just makes your STEM class more fun and um, mas maraming natututunan. And then finally, para sa ating pinaka-importante kung paano magiging innovative yung class natin, is to incorporate creativity. So, paano nga ba incorporate yung creativity? Since ikaw yung nakakaalam sa ituturo mo, let your creative juices flow. Para ikaw yung mag-isip kung paano ko ba i-convey tong information na stu- sa-, sa student ko. Paano ko ba i-assess sila in a way na parang hindi, hindi nila feeling na nag exam sila. Parang ganon. So, incorporate, one of the suggestions I have is to incorporate pro- uh, pro- problem-based learning, kagaya ng sinabi ni Professor Voiles kanina. Um, because this introduces choice and freedom into the classroom and makes space for creativity to flourish. So, hindi lang nag-memorize yung students ng mga materials and information. They think about the question, they investigate, and then they become creative and they flourish. So, yun yung gusto natin ma-achieve sa mga estudyante natin. So, just some um, key takeaways para maging innovative yung ating classes and we nurture the growth mindset in our students. First, we focus on engagement. We embrace guided play. We introduce inspiring role models. And we use classroom technology effectively. Tapos, we develop curious investigative thinking. We invite teamwork and collaboration and incorporate creativity. So I'd like to end um, this uh, talk by showing this quote. So, only the brave choose to teach. Diba? Parang sumusugod tayo ngayon <laughs> sa panahon head-on, diba? Hindi natin alam kung paano magta-transform yung education landscape in the next few years, even after the pandemic. But here we are. We are brave enough to still teach, continue teaching. And we're trying out new ideas, exploring new pedagogical techniques para, ma, para, para lang makasurvive tayo sa panahon ngayon. At para lang matulungan natin yung mga so I still encourage everyone to, you know, be brave and try new things. So kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, yung mga shinier namin ni Professor Voiles, maybe they, they might be a lot, but just choose bits and pieces, start small baby steps na incorporate sa classes natin. And laging importante po yung um, feedback. Hingi natin yung feedback sa estudyante to know what's working and, not, and what's not working kasi in the end sila naman talaga yung magbe-benefit dito. So yun po, maraming salamat. And Professor Voiles and I are happy to take uh, questions. Ayan, thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Shelly and Ma'am Dindi. So uh, marami po tayong uh, comments sa YouTube particularly. So talagang uh, appreciate po ng mga audience natin uh, yung uh, mga shinere nila Ma'am Shelly at saka ni Ma'am Dindi. Kasi nga po, as Ma'am Shelly uh, mentioned, talagang uh, this is a very, this is a pivotal point in our um, education sector. 
because uh, right now we have to be really creative and innovative to uh, uh, cater uh, all the the extraordinary needs of this time. So, ayan, I would just like to read some uh, some comment uh, from uh, from Zoom. Uh, Sir Michael uh, Galario said that it's a thematic teaching approach where whenever there is an opportunity, a teacher integrates different subject areas under a single theme, providing students a holistic learning experience like science, English, uh, and math. Ayan. Ayan. So, si, an- si ano naman, si uh, Sir Ace Jesse Ferdinand Gonzaga. Um, he said that I believe it is helpful for teachers to be up to date uh, with what is relevant to the generation they are teaching. So, ayo napakahalaga nun. Pero siguro to kick off the, the Q&A, JP, no? Um, yep. uh, kasi I, I, you know, in a bunch of our um, brainstorming sessions, no? you know, for, for this training program and um, from uh, engagement with educators, you know, over this uh The, the the span of 13 months that we've been holding all these like online events um one very important aspect um when it comes of, of teaching stem is really yung contextualization um and this is like a question that i would like to ask both our speakers si, si professor shelly and saka si professor dindi so how can we actually push the envelope when it comes to, look, uh, to, to contextualization, yung paggamit ng example? Um, kasi k- karamihan, um, and we cannot, I, I believe we cannot really blame naman our teachers no, for using yung traditional examples kasi nakita ko parang may mga comments kanina, um, yung incandescent bulb, ganyan. Um, uh, Ate Shelly and, 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 and Ate Dindi, could, could you, could you, you know, like give a bit, you know, could you give a bit more emphasis how how specific should they, should they, uh, ano ba yung extent ng effort dapat? Sobrang local ba? You know, dapat pa yung mas nakikita ng mga estudyante dun sa locality nila, yung makikita nila sa bahay. Ano ba yung difference noon versus say adapting yung examples na nasa textbook? So I can answer that question. So yung mga incandescent bulb, yung mga kumbaga traditional examples, maganda yun kumbaga ang starting point. Kasi established na siya. Marami tayong sample problems about that. Yeah. Maraming, uh, you know, maraming uh, kumbaga projects about that. Pero kumbaga after you introduce that, mas maganda na mag-introduce ka ng something new, na something relevant. So hindi naman kailangan talaga, Jeffrey, na localized siya. It should be something na kumbaga nare-recognize ng karamihan sa mga students. So halimbawa, um, bawa sa, sa, sa klase ko, I, I, may, I did a survey and I asked them kung napanood ba nila yung um, Black Panther movie. Kasi gusto ko munang malaman kung uh, familiar ba lahat ng mga estudyante ko. So, ginamit, tinanong ko yon kasi nagtuturo ako ng nanotechnology. And sa movie na yon maraming nanotechnology na references. So, I use that as a starting point dun sa aking uh, pa-project sa kanila. So, kung baga dun sa sagot sa tanong mo, does it have to be localized? It does not have to be. It just has to be na parang kung baga familiar, may familiarity ng mga estudyante mo dun sa example na gagamitin mo. So, kung hindi familiar lahat, something relevant, so we, gamit na gamit na natin yung COVID ngayon, something like that, just to uh, give something na relatable para sa mga sa mga students. Okay. Okay. Ayun. Um, JP, um, can we ask actually ask like a few questions? So, meron, meron mga questions from YouTube din po, ano. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, um, let's start with There's uh, uh, Nina Veronica Alcala. Yeah, Alcala. Yeah. And this is a question uh, to Prof. Dindi. Uh, please excuse my question, but I would like to ask, how do you con- construct an open-ended question? And what are the factors you should consider when making one? Okay. So, so open-ended. Ano ba yung open-ended question? So, these are, these are the type of questions that do not have just one answer. So, hindi siya yung parang multiple choice question, A, B, C, D, di ba? So, um, ako, based on my experience, I always uh, relate it to my learning objectives. And hindi naman ako pwedeng basta-basta na lang magtanong ng open-ended question na hindi relevant sa, itin- no, sa, sa itinuturo natin. So, I think you can start from there. Ano ba yung gusto mong um my matuna ng estudyante what is your learning objective and then 
uh, for example, for me, uh, meron kaming mga discussion forums uh, sa online class. So I want them to learn the applications of intermolecular forces in everyday life. So my question would center around that. Uh, kung, kung IMFA yung, yung nakaschedule na topic, dun ko ibabase yung ano, open-ended question. Mm -hmm. Okay, and another um, question from Ethel Munda. We tried the PBL and PG, PJBL before the pandemic, but before we had a successful one, we experienced the pandemic and face-to-face -face is not possible. Right now, we have blended classes. Communications are so limited between teachers and students, most especially high school students. Any suggestions, ma'am, on how we can practice uh, these? Uh, gaya nung sinabi ko kanina, keep it simple muna. So yep. kung, if you want to implement this approach, um, I, I, my suggestion is ano, to make your group smaller. Siguro two per group muna. Huwag mo muna involve yung five, five students per group para mas manageable sa mga estudyante yung coordination and communication. And then uh, siguro at the, uh, sa beginning pa lang ng, ano nyo, ng klase nyo, Eh, ilatag nyo na po yung inyong mga procedures, mga instructions and policies para po alam na ng mga sudyante yung what to expect throughout the year. So yun po, keep it simple muna. Huwag nyo po muna gawing komplikado. Kasi alam nyo po, if you look online, ang dami pong format. <laughs> uh, at first, when I uh, prepared for this webinar, I felt overwhelmed because, you know, it's been going on for many years and Pilipinas po parang humahawal pa lang. And personally, I haven't used this per se. Pero nakaka-overwhelm po yung ano, mga format. So, yun nga, my suggestion is to just keep it simple. Okay. So, mapunta naman po tayo sa Zoom questions. So, we encourage uh, our Zoom participants to uh, ask, their, ask their questions live. Just uh, 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 raise the, your hand. Uh, use the uh, raise hand button to uh, uh, ask your questions live. But uh, maybe I could start with a question from... Uh, Angela Puncia, uh, Puncia uh, and this is a question uh, to Ma'am Dindi, I guess. Is doing, is doing an investigatory project considered an example of project-based uh, learning? So, um, good question, ano po. So, science investigatory project is a project. <laughs> so, it's yeah. doing a project. So, kanina po nabagin ko ang kaibahan ng doing a project versus project-based learning. So, doing a project you actually do it after you learned something. Like, parang after mong ma-introduce to the concept. So meron pa ring element of traditional instruction. Whereas yung project-based learning, students actually create something during the, the process, during the, during, um, the yeah, during the project-based project, project -based, uh, learning activity. So magkaiba po silang, silang dalawa. But I read an, an article, um, stating that the project-based learning skills na makukuha ng mga sudyante can act, uh, will be beneficial po kapag nag-SIP nag na sila. Kasi nga, you know, you develop a lot of skills during project-based learning activities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so meron naman dito ang question for uh, Professor Lansigan. So it's from Manolita White. So her question um, says, how do you encourage slow learners with behavior problems to develop a growth mindset? So can you say it again? How do you? Uh, how do you encourage slow learners with behavior problems to develop a growth mindset? So ayoko sa being slow learners kasi iba't iba lang yung teaching style. So ang ang gawin natin is wag lang tayong magstick to one teaching style. Alamin natin ano yung teaching style na best na nagla-learn yung bata. So meron tayong auditory learners, meron tayong mga um, yung mga learners na dapat ay hands-on, may learners na dapat nanonood ng video. So explore po natin kung ano yung mag-work best for the student. Uh, gawin natin universal design of learning. So halimbawa po may iba na kahit nanonood ng video, gusto nila may closed captioning. So gawin po natin kumbaga accessible yung ating mga material. So yun po yung uh, masasabi ko dyan. At saka in terms of encouragement, yun, yun po, yung laging yung uh, yung engagement at yung interest ng bata, parang i-factor in natin yun sa mga lessons na i-represent natin. 
Okay. So, okay. Another question, another set of questions naman from Zoom. So, medyo ito, ay kukonsolidate ko na lang, no? Kasi yung questions po dito for for both Professor Dindin and Professor um, uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle um, is is centered around lab activities. So, how how can we facilitate, you know, like um, uh, STEM or classroom activities po? Uh, yun naman yung tanong nila. Medyo, medyo context of pandemic yung, to, no? Siguro on the context of the pandemic. Siguro is, this is on the context of the pandemic. So Kasi parang how to carry out a lab experiment. Hmm. So actually, ginagawa namin yan ngayon. We have home-based um, experiments. So we teach a course, for example, na chemistry of cooking. So hinahiya okay. namin sila magluto sa bahay nila. So try to take advantage of materials na present sa bahay na hindi nila kailangan talaga uh, bilhin, hindi talaga kinakailangan bilhin. So let's say, Um, for example, pwedeng mag-observe sila ng um, leaf. So, bawa yung magtanim sila ng seed, observe nila yung photosynthesis and stuff like that. So, think of something na makikita sa household. Or observe, let's say, um, yun kasi sabi ko kanina, observe sila ng ants. Yung observe nila yung uh, natural phenomena happen happening around them and build something from that. So, para hindi nila kailangan, kumbaga nade-develop pa rin nila dun yung basic scientific Um, method na magpo-formulate sila ng hypothesis, uh, magka-come up with an experiment, with the with, with conclusions, and so on. So, utilize yung mga makikita natin sa everyday household. And idagdag ko lang, no? I think uh, is that Marty, meron siyang webinar about this. Parang yeah. home projects. And also, there will be a webinar on uh, virtual lab. Virtual lab experience. Yeah. Oh, yun po. So, actually, that's That's yeah. coming up uh, last, uh, I think, I believe that's the last uh, Saturday of July. So that is focusing on how to design laboratory experiments with, spe uh, with um, specific emphasis to, uh, to virtual labs. So yun po. So abangan niyo po yan a month from now. Mm -hmm. So I think my, my question dito from um, Mona Lisa Suba here on Zoom. Um, maybe uh, in terms of uh, sa mga terms lang po is PBL synonymous to performance task which are based on performance standards um, I am not very sure I came across that pero hindi ko siya yeah, these are technical terms no, yes. so talagang uh -oh. uh, pero siguro uh -oh. pero siguro sa next webinar natin Um, mm -hmm. we will have more uh, pedagogical ano, uh, speakers. They know these terms more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pero um, performance-based, parang feeling ko ano, hindi yan parehas. Kasi without, with my readings, I did not come across uh, performance-based mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. learning. Yeah, probably our educators uh, from the mm -hmm. audience can enlighten us more. Kasi yeah. sila talaga yung more familiar sa mga, jarg sa mga jargons uh -huh. na to. Eh. And, and oh yeah, siguro doon yun yung papasok sa underpinnings of STEM teaching. So abangan niyo po yan. That's going to be delivered yeah. by uh, experts from, like as we said, one of the premier um, universities in the Philippines when it comes to education. Okay, we're gonna, there's, a, we will have um, a live, Uh, we, yeah, meron tayong live participants. So, uh, Joven Patricio, ha Patricio has a question. Joven, um, please, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question. Is Joven around? So, yeah. um, I think we have international participants in the audience. Yeah. So, uh, we're really sorry about uh, like uh, the mixed language that we are having here. So, uh, And I hope you, you're getting as much uh, information and benefit from this webinar. So, uh, but uh, we are uh, mostly Filipinos here, so pardon our use of the, the Philippine yeah, language. Yeah, it's, it's a, mix, yeah. a mix of yes. Filipino and, and yes. English. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Joven is actually having a hard time with, um, with his Probably mic. Probably, so, uh, yeah, connectivity issues. Also. Okay, so I guess like everything, I'll just like read that. Yes, Ade? I think he has the question written in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah po, basahin ko na lang. So, okay, so what he said was, um, Hi po, ma'am. Um, as we are facing this educational setup brought uh, by this COVID-19 pandemic, what interactive educational materials um, can you suggest for us 
um, such as simulation and or contrived learning experiences or you know recommended websites. So I guess like uh, he's asking for for resources, um, um, things that um, they can uh, they can use to make their uh, teaching and learning experiences fun and engaging even in the absence of face to face instruction. Okay, my ears is up on the chat. This is um, FET simulations. So if you open that, and then po yung mga simulations ng biological um, processes, chemical, chemi uh, chemistry, and physics. So you, you can use that uh, as part of your um, curriculum as well. Tapos yung, uh, ano yung isa niyang tanong? How do you make it um, fun and learning? So sa klasiko, when I do my um, synchronous Zoom uh, meetings, I always have polls or surveys. So nag inject ako ng Mentimeter surveys or kahit yung mga live um, Zoom polls. Uh, you do that every maybe 10, 15 minutes into your lecture just to break the ice. And that just keeps your students engaged. And what I also do is that I give extra credit pag sumasagot sila doon. So if they participate, they get extra credit, they are more encouraged to, to participate. So those, those are just some of the tips that I, I could share. Ah, uh, okay. So mahalaga po talaga sa ating mga teachers that we incentivize our students, no? So you're like, any, uh, siguro ate, ate Shelly, any form of positive reinforcement. Yes, tama. Yeah. Any form of positive reinforcement. So kung minsan halimbawa, um, uh, may asynchronous yung class ko, pero nag-hold nag ako ng office hours. So sinasabi ko na, if you meet me for office hours, you get one point extra credit. Hindi siya masyadong malaki, pero extra yeah. credit pa din siya. Tapos yung incentive is that, aside from the points, I get to know you, you get to know me, para nag-build pa rin tayo ng, ng community. Parang ganon. Okay. Yep. So maganda yung question dito ni uh, uh, Sir Clinton Imbong. Yambong. Yeah. Yambong. He's one of our uh, very, very loyal yeah. uh, followers. Patrons. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if uh, Sir Clinton is present in the audience to ask his question live. Probably he's uh, around. Anyway. Um, oh, he's present now. Yeah. In the chat. Okay. Sir Clinton. Can you uh, can you ask your question live? Because I think it's a very good question. Can you uh, turn on your uh, microphone? Good morning. Yes, yes. Good morning. Okay. Po. Sandali po ha. Kasi na okay. use ko muna yung electric fan ko kasi nakaharap sa akin. Okay, okay po. Ano ng microphone. That's no okay worries. po. It's okay po. So ganito po ang ano po yung question ko kasi dalawang beses na ako nag ano nag input ng question ko sa ano sa chat. Yes. Actually I'll just read it here. So, by the way, once again, uh, good day po. I've been teaching science and research subjects sa special science curriculum for six years. Most of my students have low self-confidence in explaining their thoughts, ideas, etc. This is what I have observed from them. Despite of group activities, marami pa rin ang nahihiyang mag-explain, sumagot, or mag-present. So, any tips po on how to boost their confidence? So, tip ko dyan is make the project scaffolded. So, para hindi sila overwhelmed. So, halimbawa po, uh, end project nila is magpe-present po sila. Simulan nyo po na gagawa muna sila ng outline, discuss sila as a group, tapos bigay kayo ng feedback, tapos magbibigay sila ng draft, bigay ulit kayo ng feedback. Pwede sila mag-practice sa harap nyo, bigay ng feedback. Medyo matrabaho siya, but I find that my students are more confident and yung final product nila is of good quality kasi marami po tayong input. So kapag po maraming beses na nagpa-practice yung bata, mas madedevelop yung self-confidence niya. Tsaka, um, halimbawa po, hindi lang siya one big project, maybe mag-start kayo ng kumbaga, mini assessments, mini, mini science projects kung yun, yun po yung ginagawa niyo. Mini research projects na low stakes lang para kahit magkamali sila or hindi masyadong maganda yung outcome, hindi masyadong affected yung grade nila. So medyo dami-damihan natin yung mga low stakes assessment as mag-build up tayo. So yun po isa sa mga tips na pwede kong ishare. Kasi ginawa ko po yun sa klase ko now na may mga international students ako na medyo nahihiya po or hesitant na mag-speak uh, kasi medyo uh, hindi sila daw magaling masyado mag-English para nahihiya sila mag-present. So ang ginawa ko is para ni-scaffold ko nga po yung assessment tapos nagbigay sila ng draft at nag-practice sila. Tapos yung end product po nila is very, very good compared dun sa initial draft na sinabmit nila. 
Oh, yeah. siguro 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 building siguro ako siguro ako makikisingit lang din ako doon no? kasi uh, you know um tayo naman lahat mga um us Filipino scientists working in an international arena uh, we can all relate to that kasi for example English is not our first language so you know yung pag-explain mo ng inyong thoughts um hindi po siya ganoon ka natural kasi as you speak you're translating you know so some para sa atin din medyo nakaka-discourage or hindi siya it's not a comfortable place pero siguro po yung key takeaway doon sa sagot ni Ate Shelly was that she is actually making yung yung reporting environment or yung pag pag-communicate ng outcome or nung nung process every step of the way uh, ang ginagawa po ni Professor Shelly um she actually has this Um, subtle way of showing the students that they are supported. Ano po? May suporta po sa si estudyante. So that way, yung pong pag-communicate nila nung kanilang outcomes or nung kanilang work, um, it's within a space that they feel safe. So ito din po yung, kaya ko ito binabanggit, kasi po, um, 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 this is I mean this is not a criticism but more of an observation po kasi lahat naman kami sa Pilipinas nag-aaral. Uh, ang laki po ng role ng teacher para po maging fun yung reporting um uh, activity. Kapag po kasi ang teacher ay sobrang intimidating at hindi po talaga nagbibigay ng feedback but more of criticism, madi-discourage po. Pero kayo sir, I I believe that you know since you brought this up, you would actually be very open to you know to to, to shaping up you know yung yung pagbigay ng feedback. So mahalaga po talaga ang role ng teacher. Kapag po nas, nararamdaman ng estudyante that they are supported, hindi po yung mga yan mahihiya. And um, believe me po, um, at an early age, at the high school level, pag nasanay nyo sila, nyo sila na magkaroon ng confidence when it comes to reporting, it will really help them out a lot, you know, um, pagpunta na nila sa trabaho. So yun po. Mm-hmm. If I may add to that, Jeff, so nabanggit mo yung feedback, mahalaga yun sa estudyante. Yeah. So ang, ang lagi kong ginagawa is appreciative feedback. Hanapin mo yeah. muna yung good points para ma-build yung confidence nila. Tapos kapag may hindi masyadong kakandahan, parang i-phrase mo siya in still a positive manner. So halimbawa, uh, I like the way that you explain this topic, but I wish you could have expanded more on this, 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 yeah. and that. So kumbaga, hindi mo gusto talaga totally yung yung pinersent nila, pero hindi mo sinabing pangit. Alam mo yun, parang yeah, hindi I... sinabi mo siya in a, in a, in a positive way, encourage mo siya, yeah. constructive criticism. So kasi, yun yung kapag kasi kinoriticize mo na yung estudyante agad, na nawawala yung self-confidence nila eh. So, dapat talaga appreciative feedback, feedback tapos scaffolded yung assessment para okay lang na magkamali sila, pangit muna yung umpisa, tapos draft, tapos saka siya nag improve Apo. Ay, siguro yung positive tone doon. No? Ang feedback po ay hindi lang marka. Hindi lang sa marka, dapat nakikita ang feedback. So, sabi nga po na Ate Shelly, purihin ninyo yung, muna, yung nakikita nyo. So, when you see a thing of beauty, you guys should always speak to it. Kapag may nakita po kayo magandang ginawa ng estudyante. And then, siguro po sabi nga na Ate Shelly, sa halit na sabihin yung mali, um, you can frame it as um, improvement opportunity. So, ibig sabihin, maganda na yung nasimulan or there's actually substance in what was actually... Um, uh, put together, improve na lang. Paano ba i-elevate? So, kapag po kasi ganun yung pagbigay nyo ng feedback, kahit po yun ay report or kahit pa yun ay trabaho ninyo, um, it, it actually makes a whole lot of difference. Okay? Ako okay. may dadagdag ako ng konti. Yeah. Yes, okay, ma'am. Sige, so, sige, sige. Um, okay. So, as teachers kasi, uh, minsan, ano, nakakalimutan natin that we were one students. Yeah. So, you know, whenever we give feedback, alalahanin po siguro natin, ano, how would I feel if I were a student kung sasabihin ko itong feedback na ito? So, in other words, let's be empath- empathic. Empathic, yeah. English, empathic, yeah. even with our students. Kasi, hindi porket, you know, teacher na tayo, uh, nauna lang tayo sa kanila actually. Pero, yeah. yun, we, we need to be empathic with our students. So, sa Pilipinas kasi parang hindi ga- uso yan masyado. <laughs> so, yeah. yun, practice empathy po sa mga students. Yeah. Student. Yep. So yung tinanong natin kanina about performance task, uh, 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 June Larry Tayan has his insight. A uh, performance task is like an umbrella or of performance-based assessment, a task assessment that is relevant, meaningful, and rigorous, may be done in different approaches, whether that's using design thinking, project-based, inquiry-based. So ve- thank you very much po, uh, uh, Sir June Larry Tayan to, uh, for clarifying that uh, term. Ayan. Okay. 
si Ma'am Janet Fronda naman. I, I think, you know, this is a fairly thought-provoking question. No? This is this one is set um, to to pick your brains when it comes to pushing the envelope. So her question um, says, um, Hi po, good morning. Is STEM teaching recommended for college students? And what modifications do you suggest for STEM te- teaching in higher education institutions? Thank you po for the answer. So siguro po ito ate, college level, college level teaching. You know, um, how how do we actually even im- improve upon um you, you know like yung siguro ate on the context ng naranasan natin when we were still in the Philippines kasi po for the benefit of those uh, more in the audience um ate Michelle and and ate din di they've been uh, away from the country for like, more than 10 years na no so siguro po <laughs> yung familiarity with with the current with the incumbent system baka po hindi po ganoon kaswak ngayon kasi it's been it's been a while pero siguro po um do do you have some some siguro po some thoughts po about that so paano pakiulit yung tanong eh ano ang tanong so, parang, ko at is uh, what can we change uh apo, sa, sa stem, stem teaching sa higher education, higher education institutions so i like uh, iniisip ko kasi no nung, nung estudyante ako parang mas nahihirapan akong um, matuto kapag yung teacher ay hindi approachable. So I think yeah. parang let's make ourselves more available to our students, especially now. Tapos being mindful, kaya yung sinabi parang empathy. Kasi marami ngayon na uh, may mental health issues, nagkakaroon ng anxiety and all. So I think we should just be more compassionate uh, ngayon. So halimbawa, uh, kapag may deadlines, pwede tayong maging uh, flexible. Uh, big, hingi, alam natin sila na mag-explain uh, kung bakit, let's say, late yung uh, submission and so on. Basta maging mindful lang tayo kasi iba na yung panahon ngayon eh. Parang masyado maraming nagbago na kailangan din natin mag-adapt dun sa changing time. So in terms nung ano ba yung dapat nating uh, maging modifications for STEM teaching, I think uh, you make yourself more available, more approachable sa mga estudyante para hindi sila mahihiyang magtanong. Kasi kapag allowed sila mag mag-question, mas na, matat, mas natututo sila mag-explore, mas natututo sila maging uh, innovative sa mga ginagawa nila. Siguro ate, that's you know, that's a cultural cultural change para po sa ating mga educators, no? Encourage encourage curiosity and inquiry. Uh, I I really like I really like that. That's that's actually good. Um meron meron naman dito si Michael Galario. Um he mentioned something that i think is um um quite in, no, very quite interesting and siguro i would like to also we would also like to get your thoughts on this sabi po ni michael galerio um sometimes some students feel disconnected too from the teachers because some teachers are too focused on those highly performing students feeling left out student would not try any effort anymore So need yata magpa ano seminar ng growth mindset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sa mga teachers na ganyan ano. Yeah. <laughs> Kasi ah yeah. uh, yun kung kung nag-focus ka lang sa high performer I think it means matataas ang grades, di ba? Oh, yung matatalino <laughs> yung mga bida-bida uh, sa klase. Oo. Pero nabanggit nga ni Ate Shady na ano, dapat ano, hindi ganyan. Ah <laughs> uh, yung growth mindset um you see others na medyo nagfa-fall behind um iba, iba lang kasi yung ano yung kumbaga meron silang ibang pinagdadaanan or you know they learn differently so um i think i really encourage na ano dapat may <laughs> ma-introduce yung concept ng growth mindset sa mga teachers na ganyan yung ano yung ganyan pa rin yung attitude towards the, uh, students okay. Napag-usapan niya natin dun sa webinar one natin. 'Di ba? Sabi natin ano, um, when it comes to, 'di ba, minsan discouraging talaga yung reward system, no? Kasi you only reward one person, 'di ba? Sabi nga natin doon, yung linya ni John Lloyd Cruz sa ano, sa pelikula yata yung na teleserye. Sa kada isang inooohan, meron kang isang libong hinihindian. So sabi nga po namin, feedback po ay deserved ng lahat ng estudyante natin regardless kung gaano yeah. man po sila kagaling sa klase o hindi. Yan po. Kailangan po may feedback kayo para sa lahat. You have to be very inclusive. Hindi yeah. lang po matatalino ang uh, mag estudyante ang, mag, ang 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 magdadala uh, ng, ma, ng maayos na kinabukasan para sa ating bansa. Lahat po. So kailangan po uh, it's it's the responsibility of 
all educators to provide feedback sa lahat ng estudyante. Sabi niya mm-hmm. po, walang walang maiiwan. No one Everybody will be left wins. Behind. Exactly. Exactly. Diyan diyan po mapasok yung tinatawag na universal design of learning. Parang hindi yeah. lang targeted mm-hmm. sa mga students na uh, visual learners, dapat meron kayong iba't ibang uh, ways sa klase ng pag-deliver ng information. So halimbawa, instead na pure lecture ka, pwede kang mag-incorporate ng videos uh, para lang may, may makita nila yung visual impact ng concept na ina-apply mo. Pwede magkaroon ka ng uh, short na hands-on activities or group work para lang kumbaga, ma, uh, ma-cater, makakater ka sa lahat ng mga uh, different types of learners sa, sa klase mo. Kasi may iba na mas natututo sila sa kapo nila estudyante kesa sa iyo. Yeah. Yung kumbaga yung layman's term ng kaklase nila, mas natututunan nila yon So, dun, dun mm-hmm. pumapasok yung group activities. So, just try to be varied in your um, teaching modalities. Mm-hmm. I would just like to uh, ask a couple of questions more from uh, YouTube. Uh, we have a question from uh, Verlin, Verlinda Herman. The MELCs in science subjects in, uh, in senior high school is still so broad. We only have a maximum of two hours per week online contact. What must be the first consideration for meaningful and concise class for learners? So ito parang, uh, it's a concern about curriculum, uh, having two broad uh, topics, but very uh, small Limited. Yeah. Uh, contact. Yeah. Ayun. So it's really tricky. Yeah. If you, so, if you so, think so, about it. So, siguro yeah. yun, yung, yung dilemma doon is that how do you remain effective, no? And innovative if you have a limited contact time. Yeah. So, yeah. contact time meaning parang hindi masyadong uh, walang office hours, very minimal Apos. office hours. Parang ganon. So, I, I think one way na you could still reach out to your students is to through social media. Gamitin natin yung social media kasi mas lahat, halos lahat may access na sa Facebook and all. So, pwede doon kayo mag-post ng mga materials yeah. nyo if ever or, or, kami, or kaya um, email them. Kung, maga, kung may learning management system, then utilize that. Pero I would still think na importante pa rin kahit na fully asynchronous yung class, importante pa din na ma-meet natin yung sudyante natin. Um, so for example, may iba akong mga sudyante na they work during the day. So I have office hours even at night na, na kahit half an hour lang just to accommodate other students from different time zones and so on. Pero marami kasi tayong ginagawa, di ba? Nanay din ako. Tapos may marami kang gagawin. So dapat meron pa din work-life balance. Pero kumbaga, kailangan pa rin natin i-prioritize kahit pa paano yung mga sudyante natin kasi ito yung profession natin. So I would think na um, kailangan pa rin mag-devote tayo ng time to really get to know our students. So hindi necessarily na um, you meet them face-to-face, but maybe through surveys, si mga ganon, you can still get an idea of what the student population is like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Siguro JP yung, last. Uh, yeah. Yes, Ate. Sorry, yung two, so nabanggit two hours lang yung ano, face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Very minimal. Okay. Yung contact, yung contact time. Oh. Uh, yun, meron naman mga Google Classroom, di ba libre yon? So pwede kang mag-post ng mga mga videos na pwede yeah. na lang panoorin. Yeah. Mga five, mga short videos lang na concise parang para ma-cover mo na yung kung ano talaga yung importante. So pwede kang mag-post doon. And I like the social media idea. So, yeah. may, mga, may mga paraan naman. Mm-hmm. Ayun. Siguro last couple of questions na lang, JP. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, very... Uh, actually, mostly comments na lang po ito. So, makita, from... natin sa, yeah. makita natin sa YouTube, puro puso na. <laughs> yeah. Sa so Zoom, yeah, so Zoom, there's a couple of, of questions. Siguro ito kay Kaiselyn yeah. Oliero. Um, good day. Question lang po. Is your situation today sa online learning, in your situation today sa online learning, some students are not able to have that re- resources in accessing um, internet connection um, and gadgets sa pag-aaral. Uh, especially po dito sa Pilipinas, hindi, uh, not all students are lucky to have fast internet connection. Um, sabi, ang tanong niya, what things can we do para ma-deliver pa rin uh, namin ang learning, especially uh, the, um, in, this, in this situation? So, so, so siguro ate, ate siya, ate din, this is like a question about accessibility. Dindi, mm-hmm. would you like to comment? <laughs> yeah, very, very tricky yan uh-huh. kasi ano, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, it's very hard actually. Yeah. Masyado siyang, masyado siyang mahirap kasi mm-hmm. uh, kailangan talaga ng internet 
to facilitate online learning. Pero kung talagang wala, uh, that's dun papasok yung printed modules. So I think yeah. we have a workshop on that, Jeff. Tama ba yung sa yeah. training? Yes. So yeah. isa yung sa pwedeng i-address. Ano But kung walang internet connection, walang gadgets, I think it would be really very difficult for online learning to proceed. So dun papasok yung paggawa ng module. Yep. Pero I just re- kagabi, yes. uh, I was watching the TGIF. So Ma'am Katsi shared her experience with a student from Myanmar. So parang ganyan din yung problema. May internet connection problems, di ba? Tama ba, JP? Yeah, yeah. What they did was uh, they actually put every, all the materials together into a USB. Tapos pinadala nila sa ibang bansa yung materials. Apo. So yeah. uh, uh, y- y- if that's context, possible, yeah. yeah, if that's yeah. possible, then you can, as long my computer yung studyante, then or meron silang access sa, ano, I don't know, local library, then baka pwede yun. <laughs> baka yeah, yeah. pwede rin mag-work yun. Ayun. So yung konteksto po okay. sa Myanmar ay meron pong estudyante yung isa po nating part ng leadership team sa Philsci Hub uh, na nandun po sa Myanmar. Uh, since meron po silang issue doon sa internet connection ngayon, ang ginawa nga po ng teacher, uh, ng ating professor sa Pilipinas, lahat ng materials nila, niload nila into a USB, minil, ipinadala po nila doon. Mm-hmm. So, ayun po. So, siguro po kailangan talagang hanapan ng paraan, depende sa kung anong resources ang meron doon sa inyong um, locality. Yeah. Uh, siguro po humiling kayo ng tulong sa inyong mga local government offices, mm-hmm. you know, if resources can be made available to, you know, facilitate for this transfer of materials. And, mm-hmm. you know po, um, um, kami po sa Philsci Hub talaga ay ano naniniwala na ano lahat naman po ay ginagawa ninyong mga guro ngayong mga panahon ito para po talaga makapag-deliver and um at the I just remembered um yun pong webinar namin sometime actually almost a year ago August of last year um you know when we had five of you um delivering um a webinar there was actually a section there about accessibility So check nyo lang po yung webinar namin sometime last year with Professor Len Segan and four other seasoned um, Filipino educators. They actually talked about um, accessibility po doon. Mahal, mahal pa rin ba ang USB sa atin? Hindi ko na alam. <laughs> Meron meron ating okay. ano, meron may mga actually may mga mura na rin naman. Yeah. Um, mura na no. Oo, hindi mm-hmm. kagaya ng panahon natin. <laughs> Oo. Pero siguro yung pinakamalala na lang na sitwasyon nila pati computer wala. So siguro doon ko talaga sabi nga ni Ate yeah. Shelly, um, printed yeah. module na lang din. So yep. yun naman na yung ano. And here so hoping hopefully po no kapag yung vaccination rate sa Pilipinas ay medyo umayos na, hopefully yung some form of face to face um teaching will be more possible. Mm-hmm. Baka po mas ma-lengthen na yung contact hours. Mm-hmm. But we hear you, we understand you po. Napakahirap po talaga sa situation mm-hmm. na to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And may I just add na yung mga print, yung mga modules po namin sa website are printable. Um, you can download them and print them uh, just for these uh, cases na hindi uh, may connectivity issues. Apo. Ito, ito last lang daw. Ay, tawag ko si JP Dong. <laughs> JP, na na-share ni ano, na-share ng ano ni ni uh, Ma'am Raquel Bernal. Hi Ma'am. Uh, Ma'am si Ma'am Raquel ay ever present sa lahat ng ating mga events. Yes. Um sabi nag-share si Ma'am Raquel. What she said was that ako po yung activity or module bukod sa I don't know what GT, GCR, siguro printed 'yon. Ah, uh, GC, uh, group chat, group chat. Ah, uh, na nasa Facebook Messenger pa. Pati daw po pictures ng modules, every page inilalagay nila para ma-access. And I think that's a very good thing kasi po yung Facebook, I believe is a free um free yeah, it can be on free data. Yes. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. free data. So yun po, actually gawa kayo ng group chat, padalan niyo kasi ngayon kung hindi man mag kung wala mang cellphone yung Estudyante, baka po yung magulang or baka yung kapatid. Um, yun po. Go, um, hanapan. Siguro po dito, dito talaga po mapasok yung sinabi ni Professor Dindi at saka ni Professor Michelle na we always have to embrace technology because it's not only that, you know, mapapakita natin talaga sa estudyante yung impact niyan, mas may impact, inspire sila sa sciences. But by also embracing technology, malalaman niyo rin po yung iba't ibang resources na free at your own disposal. So, mm-hmm. actually, dun sa first webinar namin, specifically, JP Onya talked about the Import, you know, like how effective STEM teach, teaching um, encourages um, uh, what, what, what's that, JP? Um, technology? Uh, learning, yeah, learning technology, technology use. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. technology use. Yun. Yes. Ayaw. And I think, I know, parang uh, dito sa Philsci Hub, uh, we have been uh, rolling out a lot of uh, 
uh, resource materials pero intayin niyo lang po siguro kung makakapag-produce kami ng infographics para sa mga ganito and uh, yeah and and one more thing one more thing po that's actually about to come for the for the upcoming school year um kung dati po meron kaming module uh, programs for Um, chemistry, biology, and physics. Na we have three. We have three yep. uh, module creators before. Yep. This time around, in collaboration no, <laughs> with yeah, yeah, in collaboration with Fuse. Um, what's gonna happen is that we're expanding that um, online modules, po. so audiovisual modules with um, uh, prescribed experiments and um, uh, problem sets and worksheets for evaluation. So essentially. This time around, we will be covering both elementary and high school levels. Uh, so for elementary, po, we'll uh, have both math and sciences for grade three and grade six. And then for high school level, we will um, have we will produce modules for general science, biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics, um, both at the grade seven and then yung higher levels rin po. So watch out for that. Marami po talaga tayong mga kasunod pa. So uh, mm -hmm. lahat po nito mga programs ito, we are actually targeting problems that you guys have identified or who have uh, have communicated to us over the span of months. So ginagawa mm -hmm. din namin po yan ng paraan. And then additionally po, why, bakit po ako kanina nag-spend ng time to encourage you all to participate in our uh, teacher training program. Kasi ang gusto po talaga namin doon is gumawa ng um, ecosystem among educators po such that yung mga, for example, nasa Davao, nasa Manila, makakakolaborate kayo to come up with teaching materials that we can actually deposit into an open educational resource platform na binubuo rin po namin. So ultimately, gagawan po natin ang mekanismo para po yung mga material na magaganda na nagagawa ninyo, may i-deposit po natin sa isang lugar at marami pong tao ang matutulungan sa Pilipinas. So this time around po, hindi po kailangan isang teacher lang ang pagod para gumawa ng lesson plan and materials for uh -huh. all. Gagawin po natin yung collaborative. Gagawan po natin yan ng network. What we will deliver to you is a paradigm shift. So, kapit po kayo, uh, we would welcome your participation. And in the process po, baka mabibigyan namin kayo ng feedback at matitrain din namin kayo on how to actually uh, construct educational or instructional materials, um, you know, like oh, at a very high uh, quality. So, yun po. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Doc Jeff, I think uh, at this point we can yes, wrap up the yeah. uh, a live Q&A. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nag-participate sa ating uh, live uh, question and answer portion. And yep. at this point, I would we'd just like to share some of our future activities. Can you see my screen about yeah. designing a laboratory experiments? So, uh, ito na po yung pangatlo, course number three of the uh, Felsai Hub and Fuse STEM Teaching Fellowship. A webinar series, um, and this is all about designing laboratory experiments and virtual labs to be delivered by uh, Mr. Jo John Marty Mateo, a researcher at the University of the Philippines, and uh, Professor May John Aguila, uh, a college professor also at uh, UPLB, and Dr. Chester Dabalos, a uh, college instructor at the University of Hawaii. So he's dialing in from Hawaii. Uh, Hilo, or Hilo, yeah. So ayan, uh, this is going to be uh, on July 31, same time, uh, 10 a.m. Manila. And uh, uh, as usual, this is a Zoom and a YouTube live event. And then uh, I have, um, I'm going to stop sharing for now. And also another uh, webinar. Uh, dito naman po, this is uh, under... Uh, Felsai Hub Research University. So this is uh, my turf. <laughs> so uh, this is the uh, last uh, installment of the uh, webinar series for uh, Felsai Hub Research University. And this is about the art of STEM conference presentations. And uh, our speakers uh, will be Dr. Connie Gibas uh, from the clinical mycologist and project. Uh, she, she is a clinical mycologist and project manager at the University of Texas uh, Health at San Antonio, Texas. And uh, also, Dr. Janice uh, Hintz, uh, postdoctoral researcher at the University of Kansas Medical Center, Kansas City, USA. Kansas City, Kansas, USA. So, ayan, uh, this is going to be on July 24, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, and also, as usual, free po ang aming mga uh, webinars. Free registration po ito. So, ang mga details na po yan ay ipopost po namin sa Facebook and all of our social media handles. So keep an eye on that. And uh, right now, 
I've already uh, um, shared the link for the uh, certificates. I hope you find them uh, here on Zoom and also on YouTube. So ayun po. Kindly just uh, um, uh, fill up the Google form for you to obtain your participation certificate for this webinar. And uh, ayun po. Uh, no no uh, filling out of the Google form, no certificate, absolutely. And kindly wait uh, for seven days before we could uh, roll out all the certificates before you start um, inquiring about yours. Kasi uh, by batches po ang pag-issue namin ng uh, certificates. And then, so, siguro, yeah, JP, one more, one, one more thing, one more thing that yep. I would just like to share with you. Since um, dito po sa webinar na to, na-experience nyo na si uh, Professor... Then the boils at si Professor uh, Shelly Lansigan. Um, if only my my Canva would <laughs> would um would start cooperate up. with me. Yeah. Um. No, no, no. I'm actually just gonna share. So, so uh, yun ang atin pong dalawang speakers ngayon. We are um Phil Hub TV is actually launching um essentially um a show featuring Professor Dindi and Professor Michelle. So ito po ay tinatawag namin na Phil Hub Ed Turo Turo. So essentially po best tips and practice and practices uh, when it comes to STEM education. So you know, they will help you demystify and simplify STEM teaching and then at the same time they will also infuse modern strategies when it comes to STEM teaching and you know, some tips on how to make the teaching um process um, fun too. So yun po, Phil I have Turo Turo. So abangan nyo po, uh, there's a reason why pinag-partner din po namin sila kasi that's actually one one program that's actually uh, uh, that will be produced and brought to you by teachers for teachers. So yun po, um, abangan nyo po yan. Um, that's, uh, that's actually uh, to come. So I don't have the poster mm -hmm. with me right yeah. now but Ayan po, abangan niyo po silang dalawa. Sila po yung regular niyo makakasama. <laughs> so kung nabitin kayo dito sa webinar session na to, uh, intayin lang po niyo. Just wait for that uh, uh, show. It's a show yeah. at the yeah. Phil, Sci Hub, Phil Sci Hub TV. So ayan, unti-unti yeah. lang napopopulate yung ating uh, Phil Sci Hub TV with programs that, exactly. we, uh, that we roll out. So ayan, at this point, I think we can wrap up. So... And ending note na po tayo. Uh, Ma'am Dindi, Ma'am Shelly, if you have parting notes to our audiences, yeah. if you want yeah, to A message, share. message to, the, to our teaching community. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I have to say, I have to say, the Jimpo, uh, we, had, uh, we had about like 225 participants today. And it's the same, uh, almost the same size as webinar number one. So I think, you know, yeah. like this webinar series has actually gained, you know, like a consistent Traction. following. Yeah. So Jimpo, impart, yeah, message, message, uh, uh, message, messages to our teachers. Yeah, as a Salamat po sa pag, uh, thank you for joining us today and we are always honored po to have you and to hear your concerns and your questions. Uh, kapit lang po, <laughs> yun ang aking final words and uh, basta po salamat po sa lahat ng ginagawa nyo. Uh, your labor is not in vain <laughs> kasi po yeah. your uh, uh, sowing seeds to the next generation tulungan kayo. So, Kapit lang po, and God bless. Ayun. Ate Shelly? So, so ako naman, uh, thank you po sa support at saka sa pag-attend po ng mga webinars namin. Maraming salamat po. At saka, gagaya ng sinabi ko sa dulo ng webinar ko kanina, na only the brave come to teach. So maraming uh, salamat sa pagiging matapang sa pagtuturo sa mga panahong ito. So, but we're here, we're here to help you out. So give us feedback ano pang gusto nyo matutunan, uh, mga tips na gusto nyo malaman, and we'll be happy to work with that. Alright. Alright. So mali, maraming salamat po sa pagtutok. Isa na naman pong uh, weekend ang, ang inyo pong nispend sa amin. Dalawang oras na mahigit. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, like this... Um, active and cons consistent participation from you all. Uh, you, you guys just have no idea kung paano po kami nai-inspire sa Filipino Science Hub. Just to keep serving, to keep serving, you know, like the Filipinos um, um, and, you know, and, and the broader, you know, like and the broader um, uh, educational sector, you know, po. Uh, so yun po. Mm -hmm. Muli, maraming maraming salamat, JP. Thank you very much. And on that note, uh, we hope to see you all on our next webinars. So maraming maraming salamat and uh, keep safe. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy this weekend and uh, we'll see you all next time. Okay, take bye care bye. everyone. Take care.
I will end the Zoom session.